Guys, gals, and non-binary pals, welcome back to Mad Lad Instruments and part two of the A is for Drew, Paul, as I'm calling it. We're kicking things off immediately here, and you can see me starting by shielding the control cavity for where all the electronics are going to be. Shielding is a debated topic in the world of guitar building, but I went ahead and did it because I figured it can't hurt. And then we went over to the CNC machine to cut out a pick guard. What the hell? Well, uh, that's interesting. I promise y'all, there is never a dull day around here. So I guess in trying to push the knob onto the, the pot, there's these little tabs on the bottom that have a tendency to bend out and that separates or decouples the actual pot from the part that holds it in place. I guess this bushing or this outside um, thing that holds the thing. So thankfully, a little bit of a freak out, I reseated it and I just hammered these back in. Thankfully, they're really thin, like it looks like stainless steel, maybe tin. I don't think it's tin. Um, it's a little bit harder than that. And it reseated and all that good stuff. So I'm gonna replace this. And by the way, you can see the tear out from the drilling that I did a little bit earlier. Um, and we're gonna reseat this and try again with maybe not gargantuan amounts of force. Or what I'm probably gonna do is I'm gonna push it from the other side and make sure both sides are pressed. So it actually like sits on there pretty snugly. So here I was thinking that I was just gonna make a humorous little bit about how it takes all of three seconds to put a knob onto a pot, but that turned into a five or 10 minute ordeal. But I learned a lot and I'm having fun. I think this is just hilarious. So cue the Mudahar laugh. Um, <laughs> never a dull moment around here. Let me get this put on properly. All right, it's on there. So there is sort of one gotcha when it comes to installing pots. So the pots are oriented where, to my understanding, the pins are on the bottom and then rotating. So if the pins are oriented on the bottom and here's the pot, let's imagine it's facing you for a second, all the way to the left, your left would be zero. And then all the way to the right would be 10. And so when you install your pot, I have my pots facing this way. So all the way over here to this left is zero. So what I did before I put the the knob on is I turn it all the way to the left and it locked out. And so that is my zero and I have zero indicating up here. So just to me mentally as a player, I know that whatever number is facing up towards me when I'm playing, that's the volume. And then as I roll it up, it's going to the right because the pot is oriented going this way and it's turning to the right. But when we get to the end of it and it's at 10, then it shows 10 over here. So just making sure that you have the right pot orientation. It's not the end of the world if you have it slightly off or something like that, you're obviously gonna get a feel from what the knob is actually doing when you play it. But this is just an aesthetic thing. I want the number to be facing up towards me when I'm playing. And so that's why I did that. So now we're going to install the little switch that goes right here. And again, this is on the list of things that I think are not gonna be complicated and take all of 20 seconds, but. <laughs> play and so let's put this right in and we need to widen the hole just a little bit no big deal okay we're turning into another ordeal so a little note this happens whenever you design any sort of product but I've learned a lot from building this guitar and one of the things that I learned is that I need to open up these holes just a little bit when it comes to the CAD drawing and everything so I'm marine this out make it a little bit wider and we're gonna slip the switch in I shouldn't do that actually no 
I mean, you don't want to unnecessarily put pressure on your pieces, but if this switch like broke after just a little bit of that, I would be very, very suspicious of the quality. But anyhow, we got everything mounted up here and it's looking good. I'm not too, too bad. Also, note to self, I need to get a reamer. You may not be able to see it on thing, but I had a little bit of tear out. I had to ream out this hole with a half inch like drill bit. And thankfully I went slow, so we didn't get too, too much tear out, but uh, there was a little bit here. So a proper reaming tool would be ideal. But anyway, here we are. And if you're like me, you're kind of going back and forth on the, I don't know how I feel about the control switch being up here versus on here. Cause on traditional Les Paul, it's over here, but I mean, it's different. Paul Reed Smith or PRS has their toggle switches over here on their single cut models as well. So just because something is different doesn't mean that it's necessarily wrong or bad. It just takes some getting used to it. I'm also thinking, I'm making notes to myself that on the design, I'd like to recess these holes just a little bit more so that there's a little bit more contour. That is something that PRS also does, but not that I'm trying to be the best custom builder that's exactly like PRS, but I do like their guitars and I take a lot of design cues from them. So giving a little bit of a relief around here would be really, really sick. So I'm gonna make a note of that as well. And next up, we're going to do bridge and tuning machines. And while I am installing some tuning machines on the headstock of this guitar, I just wanted to take this little bit of time to thank all of you. The last couple of videos have been doing very, very well comparatively compared to previous uploads. And we've introduced some new friends. And I know I mentioned it at the start of every video, but I just have a lot to be thankful for as a creator. Like you guys have really shown out and commented and I try and keep up with every single comment. I'm going to try and answer everyone that I possibly can. And so far I'm up to date, but we'll see how long that lasts. But just another quick thank you to all of you guys who have been watching the previous videos and who have subscribed over the past couple of videos. Okay. So first off, you can see I got a mat and a neck support that I 3D printed. So no more sloppy sagging guitars and stuff like that. Everything is fully supported. Although this neck joint isn't braced yet. Like I haven't printed out the back plate or CNC milled the back plate yet. So it kind of sags a little bit, but we'll fix that. We're here to talk about the bridge. So here are the bridge posts. And as you can see, they don't quite fit, but the bridge that I have here, which is this really nice find, fine tuner style, bridge from Geiker, I think that's how you pronounce it. They're also the ones that made the locking machine heads. The, the posts, or it's a two piece bridge, which is typical on most Les Pauls and stuff like that. So we have the actual tail piece, which has the place where you put in the strings and everything like that and the fine tuners. And then we also have the two pneumatic style bridge posts or bridge, which you can rotate or use the screws to intonate the instrument, and then you have a set of posts for those as well. I realize in the CNC file that I built for this guitar, which I based on a file that I found on the internet, there's two posts that are about uh, probably like an eight inch in diameter in the file. And I think those are for like a different style of Les Paul bridge. I think there were certain Les Paul bridges that had like a screw in bridge post design versus a push in bridge post design. And so because they were so small and I carved everything with a quarter inch end mill and I didn't want to swap tools, I just routed each of these out with the quarter inch. And because those are too small, I didn't route them. So a little bit of a challenge here. What I'm going to have to do is just create a drawing file of this particular guitar to get the dimensions. And I'm going to print that out and I'm going to lay it over here. And then I'm going to tap where those bridge post holes are. And then I'm going to drill those out along with widening these holes a little bit so that the bridge posts fit and then we'll be able to mount the bridge. So, wish me luck. Alrighty, here we are. So, got everything bored out and got the bridge and the tailpiece mounted. And the reassuring thing knocking on wood is that when you place a string in here it almost immediately comes straight over the the bridge post or sorry the bridge saddle and then straight up along the left side so the alignment should be good and the intonation should be good I'm looking at where it's getting a little bit on the neck yeah, that should be good just want to bring the neck up and I think once the seats correctly we should be good to go. So with that in mind, just have to mount the nut yet and really reassured. So 
We've got also put some pickups in as well and put the pick guard on also. Little thing on boring out these holes, I bored them out to half an inch, but when I was half an inch, the things, the post kind of just fell in. There wasn't a whole lot of grip. So I put a little bit of tight bond in there to kind of glue it in and set it. I may come to regret that decision later, but in my notes for the updates to the design, I'm going to change that to like 0.45, so just shy of uh, 0.5. So that way there's a little bit of grip and I think you should be able to just like hammer it in and get her going there. So last thing that we need is pickups in the back plate and then to get a nut on it and hopefully see if this guitar will play. Now we're getting to the part where you have to build all the last little things. They always say it's not the first 10 miles, but the last 10 feet where the challenges really come in. I don't want to say I'm too, too challenged, but you can tell that I'm talking very, very quickly because I'm very, very excited. This is all coming together. But in building your first guitar or series of guitars, you realize that, hey, I need to not only have the CNC files and, you know, build the body and the neck, which makes up like 78% of the guitar, but you also need to know how to machine back plates and <laughs> be able to put those in there. By the way, this is probably one of the last times you'll see these. I'm realizing that in order to machine these, it takes a lot of time and a lot of material. And it's a lot easier to just use ferrules. So I've already updated the designs to have ferrules on the back. Plus it also lets you see a little bit more of the back. The back is just like one contiguous piece of wood that you can look at. There's not like this metal block thing in the middle of it, but some people, fender. <laughs> um, and PRS and other builders and stuff like that like the back plate and for obvious reasons. Also big shout outs to the Guitar Geek. I'm currently watching his interview with Ron Thorne who is the principal master builder over Fender and one of the biggest inspirations for me to get into guitar building. Uh, Ron, I don't know if you're watching this or not, but if you are, rock on. Thank you so much for inspiring me and so many other young luthiers. I hope to one day get one of your instruments, maybe, uh, Hopefully I can get on the list before you retire. I don't know what the lead time is for one of Ron's guitars, but uh, I'd probably get in one of these days and I would love to maybe swap guitars with you someday. I'll build, Ron, Ron I'll build you a guitar and you can build me one if they do that. So thank you, Ron. Anyhow, coming back to it, let's get this all fitted up. Alrighty, let me bring you up to speed because there's been a number of things that I did off camera that were kind of menial, kind of just didn't think it would be super duper alluring to have you guys watch me drill in a hole for an output jack. But if that's something that's alluring and you want to see that, maybe I'll put that on my premium Mechanics GG account or something like that. By the way, subscribe on Mechanics GG if you're cool. So what we've done so far, as you can see, there's a ton of tools here. So Mounted the input jack, as you can see here. This design is going to change almost immediately after I made it. I was like, you know what? I could probably 3D print a piece that slips in there a little bit and you don't have just this plate sitting out on top of it. Kind of like, a, I don't want to say what, but it's just not as cohesive. If we had something like sleek and sexy that just kind of fit into the hole there and made the body more contiguous versus just having this bump, I think that'd be pretty cool. Then I got the nut slot mounted so as you can see it took i had to glue a little bit of rosewood up here and a little bit of trial and error amount to fill in this little slot so when i measured out the scale length what happened there was i measured i'm like oh this is like 24 inches or whatever and then i think there was just some error in measurement and then when i took it back this is about 25 and a half so midway through i decided to just change the scale length on the guitar but other than that it's looking pretty good it got that set in there and I've got a whole bunch of tools over here that you probably can't see, but one of the things that I got was a neck checker tool thing. So I'm sure there's a proper name for this, but this basically checks the straightness of your neck. 
and this neck is not straight. <laughs> so actually there's probably about a, maybe an, that's like an eighth of an inch of a bow, but like you have to consider that a neck is very, very long. So even just an eighth of an inch of difference can cause your action to be all over the place. And right now, if I string this up, you'll see that the action on this guy is super duper high. So I'm willing to bet that once I get this knocked in straight, I might have to shim the neck pocket a little bit here, but we're gonna get this action to sit correctly. But other than that, it feels really great at the top fret. I like the fret spacing up at the top. It's just about right where I like it. And so we're gonna keep moseying on to this thing. So next order of operation is to get this neck as straight as I possibly can, doing some truss rod magic. Wish me luck because this could be really finicky. All right, something that was purported to only take about five minutes ended up taking an hour. But then again, all the best things in life are kind of like that. <laughs> They're worth the wait. So I got the action correct, but the way that I got the action correct is that I had to shim the neck a little bit to get the brank angle to be correct. So as you guys can notice now, there's about maybe a 10 or 15 degree brake angle on the neck to the body. This is pretty typical of Les Paul style builds. And what I shimmed this with was just a little bit of extra rose with that I left mm -hmm. over. So always save your scraps or your offcuts for sure, because you can turn them into shims and all sorts of other little things. You never know when you might need to give a certain part just a little bit of a, a boost. At this point, we've been doing a lot of like little things here and there. We need to talk about electronics. So I was doing a little bit of research and I really like EMGs. I had a lot of friends who have always recommended EMGs. Like, oh, you're gonna put EMGs in your guitar and stuff like that? Or on the Gengar build, I had a friend, I posted the story on Instagram. My buddy's like, oh, you're gonna throw some EMGs in there? And so EMG have kind of been my go-to. EMG and Fishman especially have done a lot in the past maybe decade or two to really push the envelope of pickups. So with the Fishman Fluence set, you no longer, if I understand correctly, you no longer actually have coils wrapped around the bobbin. There's like PCBs that have like just pure copper on them. And I think, I forget what they call it, but there's a specific name. So actually the pickups have just a really, really thick multi-layer PCB that has copper layers on them that substitutes for the coils. And of course, EMG does a lot of really cool stuff with their active pickups. I really, really like that EMG has the kind of plug and play sort of interface. The wires aren't soldered straight onto the pickups. So nothing wrong with EMG, nothing wrong with Fishman, both great, great companies. And maybe I have something a little bit in the works myself as far as making my own pickups later down the road. That'll be another video. So because this is one of my first builds and stuff like that, and I was looking around, I was a little bit more budget conscious. And so I was looking around on Amazon and I found these. These are BYO Guitar Blizzard of 59 pickups. And I wanted a more vintage sound for this particular build just because it's mimicked after that. It wasn't a tobacco purse, like the Sweet Tea Burst, I think is what it was called that I talked about in the first episode that I wanted to get when I was really, really young. So the voicing on these is probably gonna be closer to a more 59-ish call, like 59R9 style vintage sort of sound that you expect from a Les Paul. A lot of other designs that I've been working on and stuff like that, I like more modern voicings, but for this particular one, I wanted to do something a little bit different. But found these guys, they weren't super duper cheap, but they weren't ex as expensive as EMGs. And the only other issue that I had with getting a set of EMGs is just the wiring diagrams were a little bit sparse, especially since I'm just doing a one knob and one switch. <laughs> Excuse me. So for that, combined with the more vintage wiring and stuff like that, and just these had great reviews. They were priced at the right point and they're a smaller company and always wanna give a little bit of a look to the smaller companies out there. So I'm gonna give these guys a shot. So I'm gonna be dropping these in. I have some pickup covers as well. And then I'm also going to be 3D printing some pickup rings as well because the gaps that I've carved here are just a little bit bigger than your standard ones. And I figured eh, it'd be cool to just be able to say that I 3D printed or I designed and 3D printed those versus having to buy them and save that little bit of extra money. So now it is time to get into electronics, get into wiring. So let's get that going.
If you want to really know something is a small business, check this out. These are handwritten notes on the resistance for each one of these. So the neck is a 7.4 kilo ohm, and then the bridge is an 8.3. So what that tells me is either they're bluffing or they have measured the coil. I don't know. That's I think that's wood. That's the underpost. So they are measuring each one of these and then labeling them individually as they're wound, which shows just a little bit of extra care. I really, really like this. This is a good sign. Also, keep the zebras. Man, I, can you tell that I'm like stoked here? So got the wiring done up correct and went upstairs, checked it with the amp and got the magic ticks. So what I mean by that is that whenever you plug it in and you turn the toggle switch on, you can tap on it and you get a little tick, tick, tick. That just shows you that the pickup is working. So wired everything up correctly. The only thing I didn't do is I didn't get the volume pot to ground so everything goes through one consistent volume but once I get that turned on it should ground the pot and then it'll act as a pot does and be able to do volume and stuff like that so I'll solder that up off screen but yeah that was kind of frustrating but I was worried also as well that the um that the wiring or whatever wouldn't be correct because on the wiring diagram that I saw the, it looked like you had to solder and tape off the north and south poles on each of the humbuckers. And on these, it just gives you one lead line with the signal path or the signal wire. And so wired all that up and it seems to be working. It looks like there isn't any hum or anything like that, but I haven't strung it up yet and I haven't put it through anything that might have a hum. So I'll have to check that. But more than likely, I'm, bet I'm willing to bet that they probably soldered off the north and south poles of each of the bobbins and that's causing or it did all that I needed to. So that would have been an extra step that I didn't need to do. Um, so, but so far so good. These guys installed really, really well. I'm liking the profile. The only thing I had to do is just like bring in the tabs a little bit so that they sit correctly, but they look great. The pickup covers fit just about right. The bottom one is just off ever so slightly. We're talking like half a mil, but the pull position on the top one is 51 millimeters. I think the bottom one is like 50 millimeters. So the bottom one is just ever so slightly off since they're both 51 millimeter pot. I'm getting into nerd stuff and stuff like that, but long story short, the pull position on some humbuckers can be different. There's ones that are like 51 millimeters, which are these, and then there's some that go even up to 60. So we're just waiting on a couple last things. Just got to 3D print those humbucker rings, but I'm waiting on some filament to come in tomorrow. So in the meantime, we will get to fret dressing. Gonna do some last minute fret dressing. This is the Fret Guru. I can't remember what the, it's not the dagger because the dagger is the actual one that you use the round off, but some of these edges or some of these frets are a little bit edgy, kind of like me when I was in middle school. So I'm going to round them off a little bit and see if I can get it to be just a little bit more comfortable. And then once we 3D print those pickup rings, we can string up an intonate and this guy will be ready to rock. <laughs> so super stoked. Now, some nice piece will be real of me doing fret dressing. And actually, this B-reel is going to take us pretty much to the end of the video. So I guess at this point, I'll say thank you guys again for watching and a couple updates for you guys while this is going on. I've had a couple ideas on how to structure content moving forward. A lot of you guys mentioned that you kind of just like the videos where you it's more ASMR style or AS for Drew ASMR style where you kind of just watch the time lapses in the videos and hear the noises of like my shop and working on stuff and that's totally rad i think that would be a really really cool way to you know detail the build process also check out this 3d printed pickup ring that i designed and printed myself but i will definitely think about or i think i'm going to moving forward kind of do two videos one will be kind of the asmr cut where it's just the build and i've seen a lot of other builders do that as well but then i'll also have another video They'll probably come out one day after the other. And the second one will actually have like my narration, like what we're doing here, where I talk you through everything that's going on. So for those of you that are interested or like wanting to learn Luthery, not saying that I'm a, a wellspring of Luthier knowledge because I'm still very new to it, but 
I can share some tips and tricks and some ideas or my thought process with each of the builds. And this will be more in line with what I've seen other woodworkers, not necessarily guitar builders or instrument builders, but just like woodworkers in general do. So kind of get the best of both worlds. I'm also thinking of doing a series called Drew How Do I, where basically I just talk about one particular aspect, like how do you sand a guitar, how do you wire electronics, this, that, and the other, and I take you through that piece by piece, so it's more instructional, but it's more focused on one thing, so a little bit more digestible than having to digest everything in one video. So let me know in the comments what you guys think of these ideas, and we will now get to the sound test. So here we are, here is the completed build. We are doing some sound tests now. So you guys remember how I started part one, that back when I was about 19 years old, fresh out of high school, that I had a big boy job. I wanted to buy a Les Paul, but thank God I didn't because then I probably would have never gotten this guitar or built, I shouldn't say got, I built this guitar. And that's a crazy thing to think to me that it's kind of funny when you're sitting there and you're building it or like you have all the component pieces and you're like, well, yeah, this is going to be a guitar eventually. But then you get it to the end and it's like everything is finished. Everything feels good. Everything came together really, really well. It's just like, whoa. 